The China problem is not going away in a hurry. It is here to stay. China's lust for land grab in India is naked, unapologetic and unrelenting. In the latest intrusive incident launched by Chinese troops in Arunachal Pradesh, our vigilant troops beat them black and blue and push them back. All kinds of stories are flashing on news channels and social media about the incident. There is unanimity that our troops did a stellar job. The government's response to the incident came in the form of a brief, not particularly masculine statement in Parliament on the incident by Defence Minister Rajnath Singh. And that's it. And for me, that is a big problem. There has been no follow-up to that statement. I will explain what I mean by that. The methodology of treating such incidents by a political and bureaucratic class is problematic. I'm not particularly talking about the opposition demand for a full-fledged discussion on Chinese intrusions in India, even though honestly, that is a fair demand. I am specifically talking about our bureaucratic, even pusillanimous response to such incidents. A response which is at complete odds with New India, our economic strength and place in the world, bolstered by our armed forces, second largest and among the best in the world, and a nuclear deterrent which should sh send shivers down the spine of the enemy. And yet, we appear defensive, careful in our responses. I will expand on this theme a bit more, but first, a warm welcome to all viewers of the CAA show. CAA, as all of you know, is Conversations and Analysis, and my name is Jaggi Basin. To watch our show, press the big red subscriber button on your screen and subscription is, of course, completely free. We have two specific problems in responding to such crises and let me explain on both. We do not respond in proportion to our size and strength. Our responses are generally underwhelming, pragmatic, almost defensive. The reason for that is that ever since the Nehru years, there has been a mindset to treat China with kid gloves. The two problems I have talked about go hand in hand. Back then in the 1780s and, and I suspect perhaps even now, there is an entire class of bureaucrats that still get spooked by the 1962 debacle. Along with that issue, an entire class of bureaucrats grew up their thinking shaped by left liberalism in which the Americans were the bad guys and there was sympathy for China. The combination of these two influences cannot be minimized. During the Manmohan Singh government, the view prevailed not to develop infrastructure in Ladakh and Arunachal Pradesh for logistics and troop movement so as not to offend the Chinese and hope things would remain calm. The bureaucrats then and the political leadership were on the same page in fashioning a feeble, do not ruffle any feathers kind of response towards China. It's a different reality today where the political leadership is gutsier in their approach in meeting the threat perception from China. There is tremendous emphasis on developing infrastructure and the armed forces capabilities in the northern areas. And despite all this, the messaging we give to the world, even today, is feeble, extremely cautious. And messaging, especially of the energetic kind, is critical in the world of today. Look at the Ukraine-Russia war, for instance. Russia has clobbered Ukraine, but Ukrainians easily win the perception war because of the energetic messaging by its top leadership, which carries the fight to the enemy camp. Honestly, it's a big mystery to me that at one level, the Modi government backs the armed forces to the hilt, fashions the armed forces requirements more than adequately to meet the challenges both from China and Pakistan. And yet, when it comes to power projection or even a suitable response to unprovoked aggression by the Chinese, it is very reticent. Are the old-time bureaucrats in the government, especially those in the External Affairs Ministry, dictating policy in such matters? Or 
Is this the thinking of Doval, as some allege? Or maybe there is something the top leadership knows that we don't and they play safe? It's all very difficult to say. Simply a pithy response that our forces will not secede even an inch of land, etc., will not do. And this really stupid reliance on some channel sympathetic to the government to carry stories extolling the government should be discarded. All this talk and approach is old school. Today, you must win the perception war before you win actual battles. A sophisticated multimedia audio-visual response in such matters is an absolute must. And there is also a need to develop senior, very impressive armed forces personnel and excellent communicators who can regularly brief the media on these matters and end speculative damaging stories. And I cannot emphasize enough that conducted military tours to the scene of action are a must. Seeing is believing and no amount of talk in parliament can substitute to seeing what really happens on the ground and commenting about it. At the same time, I can understand the government does not want to appear too militaristic or a warmonger, something like a North Korea, which is the surest way of scaring away international investors. But at the same time, a tough, no-nonsense projection balanced with economic growth is the way to go in such matters. People in the world, especially the Chinese, do not understand soft messaging pliable accommodation. Everyone understands and acknowledges the iron hand concealed in the club. That is what we have to show. The troops have done their job. Now it is time for the government to step up to the challenge. And so on this note, I come to the end of this episode of the CAA show. Hope you really enjoyed this particular episode. If you like our show, do subscribe to us. And on this note, it's goodbye and cheers from my end.